Hey everybody, this is a quick look at picture quality between two different Z series lenses. So we're going to be looking at the new 24 to 70 f 2.8 versus the original 24 to 70 f 4. We're going to have a look at see if there's any differences in terms of sharpness, detail, at different focal lengths and at different apertures. I think this is going to be a pretty close call to determine which lens is the best one. Is the 2.8 going to justify its extra size and weight over the smaller f4? Are we going to position where a lot of photographers might just choose the f4 because they don't particularly need to shoot at 2.8, it's still sharp enough for them, good enough picture quality? and it's smaller and it's lighter with the smaller lighter camera. So really, really interesting comparison here to, to have a look at, to see, does this 2.8 lens offer us enough of a jump in picture quality for the extra size and extra weight? I, for one, am really interested to see these results because I do love using the 24 to 70 f4, really nice and small and lightweight, easy to carry. But if this 2.8 version offers me the better picture quality, will I consider taking it even though that it's heavier and larger, takes up more space in the camera bag? That's what we're gonna find out. Obviously there'll be some photographers that will, can just make their mind up even without looking at picture quality because to them size and weight would be more important. And also some photographers would say that the 2.8 is a must because low light photography, being able to take more lighting in the lens, lower ISO, better picture quality that way. So obviously in this video, we're just gonna compare the performance of the lenses. We could spend all day looking at landscape photography between the two or wedding photography between the two. So we're going to head over and look at some of those images. As always, I'm just going to show you some pictures. I'll make my own observations. But uh, what I always want you to do is just look at the images, make your own observations. If you disagree with me, that's perfectly fine. Okay, so I hope you've got your um, magnifying glasses because this is a really close comparison. So we'll start with 24 millimeters and we're going to look at both of them wide open. So the 2.8 at 2.8 and we have the 2.8 on the right hand side and then we have the f4 at f4 on the left hand side. Okay, so 2.8 on the right hand side, f4 on the left hand side. So as I mentioned, these are really close, uh, much closer than I was anticipating it to be. So we'll go in first of all at one to one. So here we are at one to one. Now on my screen directly in front of me, I can see that the 2.8 on the right hand side is sharper, but it's such a a subtle difference really um, that you might not be able to see it on the video in YouTube. What I'm really kind of looking to see the sharpness in is this black edge here. We can just see there's a tiny bit more detail in here versus the edge on the F4 version. So if we have a look at two to one, we can see again that it literally the F4 is is just ever so slightly softer. But is this really going to be a noticeable thing in everyday photography? Probably not. They're both wide open here. So the 24 to 70 2.8 at 2.8 is is incredibly sharp. It's it's actually sharper than the 24-70 f4 at f4, but the difference in that sharpness is, is minimal, but there is a difference. Okay, so now we're at 24 millimeters, both lenses at f4. So the 2.8 has been stopped down to f4, and the 24-70 f4 is still at f4. And obviously, as you would expect, the 2.8 gets sharper because it's been stopped down to the f4. So the 2.8 on the right-hand side, and the f4 on the left-hand side as you would expect. So, but again, this is at two to one straight away. The difference here is to be seen, you have to kind of either be really extremely cropping in or 
printing really big and then standing close to that print to kind of see this difference really but i think people that do often heavily crop their images would see this difference but for kind of normal everyday photography maybe not here we have both lenses still at 24 millimeters both of these lenses at f8 so the 2.8 on the right hand side and the f4 on the left hand side and at one to one they're just both extremely sharp they just look almost identical and even then so even at two to one again it's it's really close here the 2.8 is just ever so slightly sharper just edging out ever so slightly but yeah the 2.8 is sharper but goes a long way to show how good the f4 is i suppose as you would expect when both the lenses are stuck down to f11 they are almost identical again um with the ever so slightly extra bit of sharpness going to the 2.8 and it is really close and that's only because I'm looking at them right here on the screen in front of me through YouTube it, it might not even look as close as it is right here so so we have the 2.8 on the right hand side and the f4 on the left hand side both at f11 24 millimeters Okay, so here we are at 70 millimeters. This is where the F mount lens started to struggle, so it'd be interesting to see how they perform at this focal length. Um, they're both wide open, so the 2.8 is at 2.8, and the 2.8 is on the right hand side, and the F4 is on the left hand side. So let's go in and compare them at one to one first of all. This is 24 to 70, 2.8. At 2.8, it's 70 millimeters. This is 24 to 70 f4 at f4 at 70 millimeters the 2.8 is sharper at one to one marginal but it is sharper at two to one i think it get it becomes a bit clearer um that the, the 2.8 is sharper but again the f4 just does such a good job for a smaller lighter lens bear in mind they're both wide open so what we'll look at next is comparing them both at f4 so comparing both these lenses at f4 we have again the 24 70 f4 on the left hand side and the 2.8 on the right hand side so let's go and check out one to one okay so both here at f4 70 millimeters one to one we have the 24 70 f4 on the left and the 24 70 2.8 on the right obviously the 2.8 is stopped down and it is significantly sharper i think this is really the the only real time there's been a clear difference between the two lenses so far, this is the biggest difference I've seen between the two lenses. So at 70 millimeters, the 2.8 is sharper than, than the f4. At 2 to 1, we can see as well, it still retains some of that sharpness. So here, just at 2 to 1. Okay, so here we are, 70 millimeters, both stopped down at f8. We have the f4 on the left and the 2.8 on the right. And wow, they're almost identical. Um, I can't really distinguish anything between the two at one to one. So if we have a look at two to one. Yeah, the 24 to 70 2.8 and the 24 to 70 f4 at 70 millimeters f8. Uh, they're almost identical. I'm really struggling to, to see a massive difference. One thing I thought I would show you, it's a bit of an obvious one, but not everybody might be able to compare or do the comparison. So what I've done here is I've turned the lights I was using off and because of that we need a higher ISO. So both of these shots are taken at the same shutter speed. I have the f2.8 on the left hand side and the f4 on the right hand side. Now because the 2.8 is brighter and it lets more light in, the setting to get this exposure is a hundredth of a second f2.8 24 millimeters and then we've got an ISO of 6400 whereas with the 24 70 f4 at that same 100th of a second but now we can only go as bright as f4 at the same 24 millimeters we would need to use an ISO of 12800 so because we can't go as bright this is the difference that it would cause to your picture quality so the 12800 ISO on the right hand side and the 6400 ISO on the left hand side. So 2.8 on the left, f4 on the right, because you physically cannot take in as much light as a 2.8 lens, you have to have the sacrifice from the higher ISO. 
So this is just a quick comparison to show you what that higher ISO is going to look like on your camera. But obviously this will change based on the camera model that you have. So this is taken on a Z7. The Z6 would perform differently. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you found it useful. Um, I will have a full-blown usage review out in the field, loads of different examples with this lens as soon as I get to use it a bit more. So do keep an eye out for that. The full review will be on the way very soon. If you do have any questions about this lens, then please do ask me down below. Thank you very much for watching and hopefully see you again soon. Bye.